Hey Fit Fam, it is Coach Rye from Team Flex. Today, we're gonna recap Olympia and we're gonna talk about the criteria of wellness moving forward. So if you are a wellness competitor, somebody that wants to be a wellness competitor, somebody coaching wellness competitors, this is a video you wanna watch to make sure next season, you know what you're doing, you know where you're going, you know what the judges wanna see. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel too. We got tons of great other videos coming up about Olympia and everything else. Tons of criteria, and I do have a special giveaway going on right now for coaching that you're going to want to make sure you're involved in. So stay tuned, watch, let's go, let's get it going. All right, so the Wellness Olympia just completed. Uh, you know, this basically sets the tone across the board for what judges want to see in the division. All right, so if you don't know, you're not familiar with how the Olympia works, it basically is the standard of our sport. So when we see the top athletes, the top five, let's say, especially the top one, two, three athletes, it's a real clear indicator from the judges of that's the criteria they want to see. Obviously, there's a large amount of athletes that compete in Olympia, and the winners they pick are the ones that exemplify the criteria of the division the best. So doesn't matter if you're on Olympia stage, you're on a pro stage, you're on an NPC stage, or you haven't even competed before, you're a brand new competitor going to show, that criteria remains the same. So not to say you need to look like these athletes to start competing, but the judges are going to score based off how these athletes look down to every level, even if it's your first show. They're going to look for the same things, in other words, right? The level will change. The criteria stays the same. So really important to know that. So here's our winners here. So we had Francili. She came back, retained her title again. Um, then we have Issa taking second yet again. Uh, we have Elisa over here who took third. Kind of a surprise there, but she did. And then we have Rayanne over here, fourth. And then uh, Giselle over here in fifth, okay? And we're going to talk about the criteria a bit, how it looks and really where we're at. And we'll go down to the final top two, which will make more sense. But so... What I want to talk about too, these top two physiques right here, okay? This is our one and our two, Issa and Francili. They are very, very comparable physiques at this point, okay? Issa made a lot of changes, a lot of improvements. Francili also improved her physique a ton uh, coming into this, but basically they were one point off of Issa getting into the, you know, that winning spot at that point. So it's, it's definitely very similar physiques and what we're looking at here is that similar structure of, you know, the roundness to the shoulders, that fullness there, but not overdeveloped. We have the arms that match it. Not too crazy, though. Not a lot of big arms here. Bicep and tricep are staying in the zone where the shoulders are the ones that are winning the shots, okay? And then we have this tapered look comes into the waist, um, and all of that is important, these soft lines in the physique. And we'll look at this more when we get to the side-by-side the -side of them, too, because this is a harder picture to use, but... Basically, you know, everything from the lower body down becomes wellness, the fullness to the glute. Across the board here, that fullness to the quads, everything, the lower body needs to be more dominant in wellness, okay? So with the top two, Issa and Francili, we look at that and we can see, all right, that's very, very comparable. They look very, very similar. That is a really clear representation from judges saying, okay, this is the look we want. I mean, Francili and Issa, if we look at the lineup here, Okay, uh, Elisa over here, she's got some really big shoulders, more developed in the arms. She's overall just got more of that width up top, wider uh, in that sense of the upper body. And the lower body obviously still here. We got the glutes, we got the quads, we got everything. But I would say her upper body is more developed overall than Issa's and Francili's for sure. And actually, I would say that about every single person in this top five, okay? We got Cass over here in six even. I mean, she's got debatably biggest shoulders on the stage and she's in sixth place. So. So that's definitely interesting to consider, um, you know, that the more your upper body is built in this division, the more it kind of almost makes your physique too symmetrical. Remember, wellness, we want to be asymmetrical. It's actually the only division we want to be asymmetrical in, in the women's divisions. And that asymmetry happens right here. If we cut the person in half, upper body needs to be smaller, less developed than the lower body. Okay. And I think these athletes that landed themselves in these, uh, you know, lower placings in the top five, and especially down the line, like there was a lot of crazy physiques going down the line. We'll, we'll go over those in a different video. I want to talk about top five exclusively here, but you'll see that, you know, the more the upper body is built, the arms and the shoulders and everything, and the lats creating this width, all of this kind of leads to the fact, well, all right, 
they're landing themselves in a little bit lower of a placing here, right? They're still in the top five, which is great, but I think that it's a clear message when we look at Francili and we look at Issa, and they have the smallest upper bodies on stage, yet they're in the first and second place, the best in the world. It's a clear message from judges to say, all right, don't be too symmetrical and lawless. Don't get your upper body too developed, okay? Because what happens is, you know, you start looking at physiques then, and yes, killer physiques, quad sweeps, glutes, shoulders, everything's there. I mean, all the lines are there, but what we also see is it looks symmetrical. It looks almost upper, upper and lower, looks similar enough in size and shape and proportion that it can throw it off. So, this is really the judges giving us a clear message to stay true to wellness and say we want wellness to be disproportionately, you know, uh, that lower body dominance. And let's look at some other shots here. It gets more obvious as we look at this. You'll see a lot of similarities of everything I just said, but we'll talk more about how Issa and Francili are right on point and how Francili still came on top in just a minute when we get to their final two. But let's look at this call out here first, okay? So, like, look at Cass. She's in six. So we can see a uh, very developed upper body, big lats, wider in the waist. She's still got the glutes. She's still got the quads and the hamstrings, but they're overpowering in the sense. She has too much, in my opinion, muscle in this, this call out here, and that's how she landed in six. And also way too much upper body muscle just kind of throwing her physique off. We'll see the same thing, uh, you know, when we look over at Rianne. A lot of glute, a lot of hamstring, a lot of quad, but a lot of upper bod too, okay? That upper body, Giselle over here, same dealio. We're looking at that and Alisa over here too. You know, a lot, a lot of shoulder. We look again at our top two. We got Francili and we got Issa and we got a lot of lower body dominance. Big lower bodies, big quads, big glutes. Smaller in the upper body, smaller in the shoulders. It almost looks like the physique goes like this, right? In this sense of where, okay, here, boom, it's clearly more dominant. It's a triangle, a little, you know, whatever that shape's called, trapezoid going all the way down. Boom, here it is, you know, versus like a more squared outlook that we're going to get the further we go out in the call outs and the further we go down in placings too. So that's a really interesting thing. Let's look at the back shot here. This is another clear example. Ladies, gentlemen, whoever's watching this, your back pose, you can still see the upper body and it's still being judged. When judges are looking at the back pose, they want to see, okay, what's going on up top and what's going on lower body and what's that kind of symmetry look like? This is where, uh, again, Issa and Francili, they take the cake showing lower body dominance, right? You look at their upper bodies and you're like, wow, you almost can't even hardly see the shape of the shoulders. You still got that roundness. It's still there. You know they got shoulders, but really what screams in the back pose is the lower body. We're seeing the quad sweeps. We're seeing the glutes. We're seeing the upper glute. We're seeing everything totally full and very, 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 very dominant, compared to the upper body. And we're not gonna get that same effect as again, as we work out the call out. Okay, elisa has got these bigger shoulders here. It's a little bit more symmetrical, still a lot of lower body dominance, but considering that front shot didn't have it, it's it's not gonna you know favor her to place higher than she did here. And the same works out the call out. When we go to Rayanne, similar deal, um, especially Cass over here in sixth, Giselle over there in fifth. I mean, that's across the board what I'm seeing with this top placing. Very, very competitive physiques, a lot of similar Similarities. Uh, you know, what we can't deny is there's a lot of fullness to the glutes in all these athletes. There's that glute ham tie separation. Got to have that. There's, you know, the soft lines in the hamstrings and stuff like that. No hard graininess, no chiseled anything. That's not what judges want to see. And realistically, across the board, what we see, though, is that the ones, the athletes, East and Francili here, purposely having this overdone lower body and a little bit less in the upper is again still the criteria and that's what judges want to see i mean really there's no criteria change at this olympia there is nothing that's changed i mean there was a lot of physiques throughout the season that we saw that were crazy kind of winning shows or in top placings but it was because these physiques weren't really competing like these top athletes francili and isa they you know we're not seeing them on stage every weekend so of course there's going to be always a winner at a show and a lot of new pros bringing different looks with all you know very very overdone physiques you know, you might have thought, okay, they're going to come in and win. No, that's not really how it works, ladies and gentlemen. Olympia is Olympia, and it sets the criteria, and it sets the tone. And here, I'm not going to go too much deeper into this, but you see, again, same thing I'm talking about. These big upper bodies, even though this is a top five, they're still landing more kind of on the outsides, all right? So it's definitely interesting to see how uh, that really has shaped the division. Now let's look at Issa and Francili kind of side by side here. All right. This is this is where we really get to see the wellness division criteria. And we're going to dive deep into this 
right here for the next season. First, I got to mention this because I keep forgetting till the end of my video. I'm doing a giveaway for a free month of coaching, okay? Ultimate competitor coaching package on Team Flex. We give you custom training, custom nutrition, check-ins, posing, everything you need to be your best competitor no matter what level you are, beginner, never compete, all the way to pro, all right? We do the whole thing. We train you. It's free. And we're giving this away to 15 people, one month for free. List is pretty big right now. You still got time to get on it. We're going to draw names. Uh, it's, as I'm filming this, it could be today, might be tomorrow. Uh, I want to see if we can get more people on here. I want to give you all an opportunity. So just hit that link in the description, put your email in, and I'll let you know when you win, all right? That's a huge, huge thing. And make sure you subscribe to my channel also because we got tons more Olympia stuff coming, tons and tons more. I'm going to be doing side-by-side -side physique comparisons, talking more about everything. Like You're going to learn a ton being on here and checking this out. Issa and Francili. So here's Francili bringing our championship again, and then we got Issa over here taking second. And what happened here is the same thing that happened last year, and they're in those same slots as they were before this year. Issa has brought her physique up enough to be within one point okay that's a huge thing it's a huge huge thing and it's also really good for us to look at for the criteria so let's talk about it what you need to know if you want to be a wellness competitor new or you are a wellness competitor that wants to get better or you're a pro that wants to go further here's the criteria for you fullness to the shoulders got to have that shape it's really you know comes from effect of the front delt the lateral delt and then the rear delt in the back you got to have all of that they got to be well worked well rounded it's kind of that physique that creates that almost cannonball type deltoid effect but remember we don't want to be overdone we want to have that shape to show that you're working that muscle but you definitely don't want to be in the point where okay oh, upper body's looking over symmetrical it's looking too symmetrical it's looking over dominant compared to the, the lower body so really important to remember that it's about the shape it's not so much about the size and i will say this the arms you know i don't even think that this needs to be a significant focus much you're going to be doing a little bit of arm training it's not an area where you're like okay i gotta go do a whole day of biceps or triceps it's not it's not how wellness has ever been it's not how it is now it's not a huge focus you know just doing a little bit of work here and there mostly secondary work that you're going to get from doing other muscle groups Groups is going to be enough for you and actually it helps as a wellness competitor to have a little bit less of the arm development right because it actually makes your deltoids look a little bit more shapely and it also makes sure that lower body looks dominant constantly when you're on stage so don't overdo the arms i'm seeing a lot of wellness competitors over the past like season here coming with super jack biceps and you're not in an arm wrestling competition ladies you're trying to be a wellness competitor so don't get the arms overdone it will detract from your physique all right and so that's really what we want to see this width right here up top that creates this look that then tapers down into the narrow waist that is key got to have that so the tiny waist in wellness that's going to give you that tapered effect lats contribute just a little bit to this not a ton you don't need a lot of lats in this division uh, especially considering your hairs down in back pose you do want to have that sweep though that comes in here so you want to make sure you got the tiny waist going on and this is not like from doing a bunch of crunches and sit-ups and whatever this is really a lot of dieting you know doing vacuums uh, maybe some waist training stuff like this is going to create this type of aesthetic but you do want to have that tapered look go on that's your upper body all right now lower body is what makes wellness division wellness period across the board that's how we got it that's what it's called that's supposed to be over dominant that's why we have it otherwise it would just be bikini right it'd be a more jacked version of bikini where everything's symmetry up and down well wellness we want to be over dominant so the fullness to the glute gotta have this this is showing even in the front right like this is this is a lot a lot of fullness to the glute and especially this upper glute if you watch my channel we talk about upper glute all the time this will be your feedback as a wellness competitor at most levels this was isa's feedback last year right get the upper glute more that was what we were talking about in the video when i did the recap that's what her actual olympia feedback was from the judges right you got to have that upper glute and she really improved it this year but you need to make sure as a wellness competitor you have that and it's because the judges they sit below you they're going to be looking up at you so you got to make sure you have that otherwise your glutes will look flat so a lot of fullness to the glute a lot of shape and then the quads and the hamstrings okay so quads hamstrings harder to see in this pose but we'll see it in just a minute uh, you know, we're looking at really the sweep from the quad effect here, boom, and then the hamstrings that do the same thing in that zone. And here, I would say that you don't want your quads to actually overpower your physique. I think Isa has that just a little bit, and that also could be part of how she got that placing. But really, 
it all comes down to the back pose when we look at it. So here's a lot of similarities. Uh, you know, we say bodybuilding's one from the back. That's what we say in wellness. That's what we say in bikini. That's what we say across the board. This is the hardest part of your physique to develop, and it's the part that will tell judges if you're ready or you're not. So remember that soft roundness we talked about? Not really soft, but, you know, it's not huge. It's not dramatic. It's not a pumpkin for a deltoid. It's got the shape, but it's not overdone. Uh, that's what they want in the shoulders. And then triceps too. You can almost not even see triceps going on here. Cause like I said, keep the arm muscles on the lower end. And then we look lower body. What makes wellness wellness. Okay. Uh, we're looking at the glutes. We're looking at the quads and we're looking at hamstrings. So for the glutes, you got to have a lot of fullness to the glute. Very, very full. This is that upper glute zone I'm talking about. If you don't have this and this isn't looking like this, this is not going to be your best placing on stage. Okay. It's just the way it is. You really need to have that upper glute being built. And you do this through very specific methods of training and it's a lot of work and it's it's definitely not easy to attain you got to train hard you got to train heavy you got to train with specificity to isolate that area to really get that to work uh this was one of isa's big targets for the season and she really brought it up and brought it to stage and that's really how she's getting within one point because we're looking at these physiques and it's very 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 similar uh francine just basically has more three-dimensionality to her glutes because there's more depth there all right so overall fullness to the glute overall upper glutes got to be built all of that is key all that is important uh slight separation between the glute and the hamstring okay we hear this all the time this is in the criteria this is what you got to have this does not mean hard chiseled lines this means slight separation so you might look at this and say okay that looks like it's a hard chisel no if you want to see what hard chiseled looks like look at some of the other women's divisions go look at women's bodybuilding go look at women's physique and you're going to see, you know, what a hard chisel glute looks like. This is realistically just from a lot of hypertrophy of this, the glute muscles coming into the, a lot of hypertrophy of the hamstring. OK, that separation that occurs is happening because of the body fat percentage they're at, but mainly because of the muscle that's just pushing on the skin. So a lot of women, you know, and coaches always chasing ham ties and saying, hey, you got to be leaner, got to be leaner, got to be leaner. That's not how you're going to get your best ham tie, right? You can't really diet yourself to a ham tie. Like you'll get really lean, but if you don't have the muscle, it's not going to show like this ever. So really making sure that you prioritize the muscle and the glute and then the hamstring and to get to that level of conditioning without losing that to get that separation. And we look at quads here, quads. You can see the quads on wellness athletes sweeping from the back. Judges look for this. This is an indicator for them if, if the quads are developed enough. If your quads are not showing from your back pose, it could be an indicator that you really need to bring the quads up overall. So what I think has been echoed constantly with the wellness division and uh, again here at this Olympia is don't overdo the muscularity. Don't overdo the upper body. Don't get too big anywhere. Don't get too big in the lower body either. Just get that look and that asymmetry there and have that. And I mean the conditioning factor of wellness too. We can't leave that off the board. With conditioning, you need to be in the soft line zone. You want to have soft lines, you know, throughout your physique, different areas here, a little bit in the glute, a little in the quad, maybe abs, obliques for sure, some separation in the shoulder. These are separations. These are not striations. These are not deep cuts. These are not graininess that you'll see in some of the other women's divisions like figure, women's physique, women's bodybuilding. And again, if you think that I'm crazy by saying this, and you're like, these athletes are lean. Yes, they're clearly lean, but they're criteria of wellness lean they're not you know to the point where they're chiseled out of granite like we see in bodybuilding and so on and so forth so important to note that if you're too lean you will score down if you're too soft you will score down you want to have these soft lines and these separations but you don't want to get to the point where we're seeing each muscle fiber each thread anything like that and obviously any extra body fat that's going to prevent you from showing the tie-in or from showing the oblique muscle or from showing any of those areas we're talking about, that's going to be detrimental too to your placing. So it's a softer level of conditioning in the sense of what's showing, but it's also in the zone where it is for sure to the criteria of condition that you got to have. So it's important to remember that and understand that when I'm telling you guys this stuff. Um, but yeah, basically what I would say, this Olympia, great Olympia. It's great to see these two here. Um, we're going to do some more videos where we're going – Hey, how much did Francine improve from this to last and same with Issa and so on and so forth more on the criteria, but overall the criteria has not changed ladies and gentlemen.
And I know there's been coaches and athletes and competitors and people echoing across the board. The criteria is different. Well, you know, if you look at the resources like we got, NPC News Online, Tyler Manning, you know, talking about it, he's not saying it's changed. You know, we're not seeing that it's changed with Olympia. We're seeing a lot of the things people did think were changing. All their favorite athletes that were coming up that were looking freaky and way jacked and super lean, not winning Olympia. Okay. So it's important to remember that. What you see on Instagram and what you think is good is not actually what the criteria is. So if you train for those things, it's not going to benefit you on stage at any level to try to look like your favorite athlete if they're not performing the way you want, blah, blah, blah. So realistically, criteria is the same. And if you want help figuring this out, you know, we have tons of resources for that. This channel is great. Subscribe here. And remember to get in on this free month of coaching. We're drawing on this soon. It's crazy. We're doing the giveaway for Olympia and Olympia is over. So we got to pick some people soon. Make sure you're on that list and stay tuned for more videos. Thanks for watching. Coach Rye is out.